Hey everybody, it's Rockula, and welcome back to Rockula Retrospective. This is day number seven of Vita, which stands for Vlog Every Day in April, and my theme is 30 Bands in 30 Days. Today's band is Devo. Devo has made a career out of confusing the crap out of people, and I was no exception. My first exposure was seeing them on Saturday Night Live, as well as hearing a couple of songs on Dr. Demento. My 10-year-old little kid brain couldn't wrap itself around the Devo concept. I was into Kiss and all of those 70s rock god bands. These guys wore outfits that made them look more like nerds than rock gods. In fact, they were doing everything they could to make sure they didn't fit into the mold of what a rock star was supposed to be back then. Since this Vita series is about the people who influenced my musical evolution, Inevitably, I do have to talk about some of the prejudices and negative ways of thinking, so here's one of the things that I'm not so proud of. There was a time in the early 80s when punk and new wave had been misrepresented by the media. The general consensus was that punks and wavers were somehow mentally deficient because of the dehumanizing way they presented themselves. To me and my hard rock loving friends, you were supposed to depict yourself as elevated above humans into godlike status. It seemed that Devo was going the exact opposite way by becoming some kind of post nuclear subhuman species. I will get into the concept of de evolution in a little bit, but here's the ugly side of the way that many confused people felt about Devo. The mentally challenged kids in my school went to pre vocational classes. We called those kids Prevos. See where I'm going with this? Prevo, Devo. We basically thought Devo and all of those weird people with purple hair and safety pins through their cheeks were retards. I know that is a terrible word to use now, but retarded was an acceptable term back then. I bring this up not to be offensive, but to show what kinds of stupid things that I used to believe. That's right, I used to be one of the ninnies and the twits. I didn't tell my friends that I bought the Whippet 45 because I knew they would make fun of me. Looking back, this would become prevalent in my formative years. It seems like the best music I've ever listened to was the stuff my friends hated and made fun of me for listening to. On a side note, the B-side of Whippet was a song called Turnaround, which would later be covered by Nirvana. I moved to Denton in my early 20s and shared a house with some of the members of an experimental group called March Ark. Steve Johnson made a tape for me of Oh No It's Devo and Freedom of Choice. He was also the first person to expose me to Fetus, but if I was just learning to accept Devo, then I sure wasn't in any shape to understand Fetus. Yet. I have a double CD of the albums Oh No It's Devo and Freedom of Choice and I would definitely classify it as the Devo Starter Kit. The standout tracks are Time Out for Fun, Peekaboo, That's Good, and Speed Racer on Oh No It's Devo, Girl You Want, Freedom of Choice, and Gates of Steel on Freedom of Choice. I put these albums on whenever I do a major cleaning project because they keep me in an upbeat mood. You just can't dilly dally when Devo's on. I also own Are We Not Men and New Traditionalists. But there are other albums that I have not heard yet which are Shout, Total Devo, Smooth Noodle Maps, as well as the 2010 release Something for Everybody. Devo's influence on me extends way beyond the music or even the image. I was confused about why I liked this band until I began to understand the truth about de-evolution. The concept of de-evolution is at the core of Devo's message. I will probably have a more lengthy explanation of the concept at a later date, but here it is in a nutshell. Man has reached a state of evolution where he prefers comfort and certainty to intellectual stimulation and spiritual growth. Devo takes the concept and completely warps it by portraying themselves as the positive mutations of the dehumanizing aspects of technology. Spuds are the people who are intellectually evolved. Ninnies and twits are those who have de-evolved into the dumbed down consumer class. They represent the negative side of mutation. There is a constant struggle between the two opposing forces. Will the spuds propel the human race forward into a higher state of consciousness, or will the ninnies and the twits bog down progress until we become genetically stagnant? The most brilliant aspect of this concept is that it becomes instantly apparent who gets it and who does not. 
Both sides are more than willing to give their honest opinion on the subject, which is a very hard thing to get a human being to do. Devo's philosophy puts a distance between themselves and all the robot new wave copycats that sprung up in their wake. I had stated before in this series that my fear of technology was eased by Buckethead and the Beastie Boys and that they allowed me to think less like a rock drummer and more like a machine. My resurgence of interest in Devo came about when I discovered the Truth About De-Evolution VHS and started listening to Devo with more evolved ears. My natural inclination is to dissect music and to isolate each part so that I can understand it on a mechanical level. What I realized is that Devo was doing the same thing that another band on this list was doing. That band is Kraftwerk, and they, along with Devo, built their music around a concept more akin to modern sampling and looping than just band members jamming together. The members of Devo didn't play parts, they had jobs, and they made the utmost effort to make rock instruments sound like machines. One of the biggest misconceptions about Devo was that they used a lot of drum machines, but that was actually the drummer 90% of the time. You will often hear me use the term 21st century musician, and I can honestly say that the members of Devo had their eyes set on that distant horizon. Concepts that used to evoke derision are now heralded as visionary. This band saw 30 years into the future and predicted a society run by ninnies and twits. Your duty now for the future is to stand up and be counted as one of the spuds. Thanks for checking out day 7 of my Vita series, 30 Bands in 30 Days. Tomorrow's band, The Dead Kennedys. I'm Rockula and this is Rockula Retrospective.